Welcome. Today we gather as a community to engage one another, engage God in worship, and engage in sharing the love of Christ. Welcome to Engage. young adults as Pastor Graves coming to you once again for your weekly word. Join me for a word of prayer. Bow your heads and close your eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time in which we can gather to study your word. Lord, may this word go forth that our lives might be changed and our souls ever transformed. Lord, give me strength and power as I am weak and feeble. I need your strength to let this word go forth so that you and you alone might get the glory. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. We're continuing in our series and finishing up uh, our series, the haves and the have nots, looking at what we have as well as what we don't have to bring God glory in our lives and in this world. I want to start this week with stating a quote. It reads like this. Families are the compass that guide us. They are the inspiration to reach great heights 
and our comfort when we occasionally falter by Brad Henry. I was reading an interesting article this week, and in this article, the article discussed this words that are easily uh, stated in other languages that are hard to translate into English. And they had a list of words that I didn't even know how to pronounce, let alone read. But it was interesting because there was one word in particular that I knew of that I didn't know was difficult to translate into English. And that word is this Ubuntu. It is a word that originated in Africa and it has a very powerful meaning. Right. And so uh, to explain this word, the best way it can be described is this. I am because we are. And Ubuntu reminds us that we can't do life alone. We need each other. And it embodies the values of compassion, collaboration, sharing and empathy, values that all of us as human beings need in order to reach our full potential. Ubuntu teaches us this thought process that life isn't worth living by yourself. You can't live life outside of others and others can't live life outside of you. We're all connected in some way, shape or form. It reminds us that we can't amount to much without our friends, our families and even our community. And it reminds us of this, finally, that we become more of who we're supposed to be when we walk life with others. That word again is Ubuntu. I am because we are. And so for the last couple of weeks, we've been looking at and talking about who we are, what we have and what gives us value. We've been doing this by focusing less on what we don't have so we can better already see what God has blessed us with, with what we do have. And so far, we talked about these three things. We all have a past. We all have a present and we all have a future. And today I want to talk about a fourth thing that all of us have. We all have a family. That's right. God has created each and every one of us with a family. Now, watch this. It may not be the family you want. It may not be the family you desire, but it is the family you have. And our family is bigger than what our understanding of family is. For some of us, like myself, my understanding of family goes beyond biological because I'm adopted. For some of you, your family is your your cousins who have actually your aunties who have raised you. That is your mother. Or maybe it's your community who has support supported you and gotten you to where you are in this life. Let's think about that concept of family, not just what we traditionally think about family, those who birth you, but those who support you, those who encourage you and those who challenge you to be all that you can be. And so if you really want to know who you are to your fullest, you need good people around you, right? You need support. You need a community. You need a family. And we all have a family, right? We all want to belong somewhere. When we belong to somewhere or some place, we begin to find out a vital part of our identities, it's why we join clubs, why we play sports, why we participate in different friend groups and even sign up for different organizations. We all know that being alone isn't good. As a matter of fact, it's not good. It's so not good that God said it's not good for man to be alone. He created us in relationship. And when we look at God, God is a relational God. God is three in one. Yes, God is one, but in the Godhead, there are three, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we are created for connection, and our connection with others is what shapes who we are. You need a community that feels like family, and I got great news for you today. You have one. Even if you don't have a family, you have your New Hope family. You have your family here at New Hope that is supporting you, that is praying for you, that wants the very best for you. And these people in your family, they're very important because they shape who you are and who you become in life. And so for the past few weeks, we've been looking at the life of Moses and we saw how God brought value to Moses despite his past, used that in his present and allowed a great future to come about not only for Moses, but also for the children of Israel through 
Moses, right? And just like you, Moses wasn't the only character in his story. Moses also had a family. He also had a group of people that he supported and that supported him. And I don't just mean his relatives when I talk about his family. It wasn't a perfect community. No one has a perfect family. No one has a perfect community. But Moses was surrounded by people who loved, supported, and influenced each other. Right? Moses' life was tied to the people that he was leading out of bondage. And so he knew that if he was out of bondage, they could be out of bondage. And if they were out of bondage, he could be out of bondage, but he couldn't do the work he did without them. And maybe that's important for us to understand in this day and age of Western civilization where it's all about me. The truth is, it's not all about you. It is about us. How can I make us better? How can we make us be a better people? How can we be better in what we do and what we don't do? And we talked about how Moses was able to be used to bring about uh, bring about the Hebrew people out of slavery. They were they were under Egyptian captivity. The only way they were able to do that was in community, in the power of God working in that community. And as God's people, we stated they weren't perfect. They began to wonder through the wilderness for many years. There were moments when they they thought they needed to come together for care. And there were moments when they felt like they didn't need each other. And that's how many of us feel when we think about our families. Right. Sometimes I feel like I need them. Sometimes I don't feel like I need them. But the truth is we need our family. Many of us wouldn't be where we are today without our families. Exodus 17, 8 through 16 reads like this. Then Amalek came and fought with Israel at Rephidim. So Moses told, said to Joshua, choose for us men and go out and fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the staff of God in my hand. So Moses did as Moses told him and fought with Amalek while Moses, Aaron and Hur went up to the top of the hill. Whenever Moses held up his hand, Israel prevailed. And whenever he lowered his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands grew weary. So they took a stone and put it up under him. And he sat on it while Aaron and Hur held up his hand, one side on one on one side and the other on the other side. So his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. And Joshua overwhelmed Amalek and his people with the sword. And then the Lord said to Moses, write this as a memorial in a book and recite it in the ears of Joshua that I will utterly blot out the memory of Amalek from under heaven. And Moses built an altar and called the name of it. The Lord is my banner, saying a hand upon the throne of God, the throne of the Lord. The Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. As we read this text, you might be thinking, Pastor Gray, what does this have to do with family? Here it is. Moses literally needed support from his family in order to survive and do what God called him to do. He was to go up to the top of the mountain, hold up the staff. And when he did that, they would win. They would prevail. But have you ever tried to hold something up for more than five minutes? Your arms began to get tired. And Moses at this point in time isn't the young man that we read about when we first started this sermon series. Moses is old and so he relies on his community. He relies on his family to literally lift up his arms so that his people can prevail over those who are trying to take them out. And that is what family is all about. Supporting you in times when you can't support yourself, allowing greater things to come about. Right. If you are doing things together, Moses could not have won that battle by himself. But when he fought that battle through the power of God and with his family, they became victorious. They were so victorious that God said, write this in a book so that you will be reminded in the future of what your family has done for you. Right. And that ought to encourage us. There are some things we just can't do by ourselves. We need 
other people. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, Paul talks about there are a variety of gifts, but the same spirit. And there are a variety of services, but the same Lord. We all got our own parts in our family. We all can't be all things to all people. But if we take what it is God has called us to be in our families, great things can come about, right? We're all not a part of just a family here on earth, but we're all a part of the body of Christ. If we're in a relationship with God, God has put this body together. Every part of this body belongs to God, but in every part of the body belonging to God, every part has his own responsibility and his own part to play. As followers of Christ, learn to appreciate your family, learn to appreciate those who support you and even those who challenge you. As young people, oftentimes we see those who challenge us as burdens, but they could be the very people who propel us into victory and into great things to bring God glory. Many of us think about our family as burdens, but the exciting news about the family that God has given us is literally this. Without that family, we wouldn't be where we are today. And God gives us a family as children of God that is vast as the world. There's people from every tribe, every nation and every tongue. In Revelation chapter seven, it says, and I looked and behold a great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages standing before the throne, before the lamb, clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands. No matter who you are, never try to limit who God is trying to use as your family. Right. We often put limits. Well, they white, they black, so they can't be my family. No, God can use anybody to bless you. God can use in my own story. I was adopted by a black family, though I had a white mother. Imagine if I said, God, no, that's not going to work. No. If God is trying to put you into a family, be open to it. Be open into what God is trying to do by the people he is placing in your lives. No matter who you are, you have a family. And if you don't feel like you have a family, know that you do because you have a family in the body of Christ. There are people who want to become your family if you let them. Right. And let's be real. Family isn't always a fun topic. It isn't always a good topic for many people. And so maybe you need to be reminded of who your family is. Or maybe you need permission to think more broadly about who your family could be. Or maybe you need encouragement just to get over the family hurt that you experienced. The question I want to ask on today and ask you to think about is, who is your family? Who can you count on for support? Who shares your faith in Jesus Christ? Maybe who doesn't share your faith, but is a part of your community? Who would you like to be in a more consistent relationship with? Maybe these are your relatives, your peers, your teachers, your coaches, or even the people you're sitting in the room with right now. These people are a part of your family and they shape who you are and who you are becoming. Remember what the family did to support Moses in overcoming Amalek, right? They supported him literally. They lifted him up so that all people could be lifted up. Those are the kind of people that you want in your family. And so, Pastor Grace, what's all this talk about family? Let me remind you, we can only do what we do when we are together. And God has called us to a mission. He's called us to a mission individually as well as collectively. And on those missions, we can't accomplish them by ourselves. Pest Parks always says, a man that is self-made is half-made. And that is absolutely true. If it's all about you and you're the only one who's doing something, you're probably not operating to the fullest capacity of what God is trying to do through you. And so let me encourage you, as you figure out what your mission is here on this earth, find other people to go on mission with. Right. We couldn't make it to the moon by ourselves. You can't win a basketball game by yourself, no matter how great you are. You can't get to where you want to go in life by yourself. You're going to need others and you're going to have to care for other people and other people are going to have to care 
for you. And so be encouraged that no matter how perfect, imperfect, great or ungrateful your family is, the fact is you have a family. Let me ask this final question. Could you imagine what God could do through us if we all decided to work together as one body to care for each other and for the whole world? I think that if we accepted and embraced this concept of family, Ubuntu, I am because we are, we would see this world drastically change. And God would change this world just like he used Moses to change the world in the past. You have that capacity on the inside of you, but you have to recognize that you got a family and you can't do what God is calling you to do by yourself. This is a sermon series on the have and the have nots. You might not got a rich family. You might not have a picture perfect family, but God can use and often does use imperfect people to bring about greatness. So accept your family, accept your past, accept your present and watch how God can transform your future. Join me now, if you will, for Faith Reflections. What's up, everybody? The first question is, who are some people in your life that feel like family, but they're not related to you? Those are my best girlfriends, Janella and Marlisa. We met almost 10 years ago in college, and they are the big sisters that I never had because I'm an only child. What are some of the ways the people in our lives shape who we are? Whew. Whew. That's a loaded question because there are people that come in our lives for a season, a moment, an assignment, and they're stuck with us for a lifetime, aka some of our family members. And God uses all different people, including our enemies, including the people that we don't like, including people that... Um, pushes out of our comfort zones and we don't want to be pushed, God uses those people as well so that we can be transformed into the image of Jesus Christ so that we can develop fruits of the Holy Spirit. Why do you think it's significant that God's family is made up of people from every nation, tribe, and tongue? How is your community similar to or different from the body of Christ in this way? Because God celebrates diversity. So I encourage you to connect with someone that does not look like you racially or ethnicity or they don't speak a different language from you or they're in a different age than you or in a different um educational background or even social status you never know um, what you can learn from somebody or gain from for just learning about somebody else that's not like you do you think your community needs to grow bigger stronger or both my professional community needs to grow bigger and stronger as i need to network more within my company and then outside of my company. I need to be more actively involved in my sorority and also my professional organization called the American Association of University Women. That's where I need to be stronger in. And then my personal community of friends, we need to be stronger as well and trying to find ways to stay connected, um, still have deep conversations and still remind each other that we got each other's back and that we're not easily broken in the midst of a pandemic. Dear Heavenly Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this word that reminds us that we all have a family, God, that you have uniquely designed us for connectedness and to be in relationships. So, Lord, let us not take that for granted. Lord, help us to be careful about complaining about the family you've called us to. Lord, I ask that you would just encourage us, encourage these young people to accept and embrace the family you've given them despite all that is wrong with us. Lord, for you can use imperfect beings to bring about great things in this world, just as you use Moses. For we're reminded that he killed someone, but you still used him to set people free. And so, Lord, may you use us in mighty ways by using our past, our present, our future, and even our families to bring you glory. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Thank you for choosing to worship with us today. We pray that you were blessed by this experience.
Until next time, have a blessed week. Thank you.